If anybody wants to see me in 4K, but here it is. No, I didn't bring a pin though. Hey, what's up, couchworm? Couchworms. You like that? Couchworms. I should leave that in there. No. Hey, couchworms. That's <laughs> that means something different. Very disturbing. Now I don't want to sit on a couch. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Couch Potatoes and Horror Maniacs? It is that time of year again. We're getting very, very close to spooky season. And when, unlike the reading material, the movie material, that actually starts first day of fall in this household because this list seems to get bigger and bigger and bigger every year. And I'm so proud of you. You've come so far. You didn't even watch horror movies when we got together. Now we dedicate a whole six weeks to it. Minimally. It's and exciting. we do with the kids and have family movies. So. It's just got bigger and bigger. We have, we have corporatized... <laughs> uh, Halloween guys. I'm afraid it happens yes. to all of us. But what we're going to do here is we did this last year and people seem to like it is we're just going to kind of go over what our Halloween picks are. If you weren't here last year, what we do is we put together about, say, about 25, 30 movie trailers and we narrow it down to about 14 or 15 movies that we're going to watch for spooky season. And then we kind of take turns picking. And uh, I think you had number one pick last year, and I had number one pick this year, but it was kind of a cheat because if there's a new Stephen King adaptation, we watch it. But we're going to kind of go through those right now and talk about, you know, why we picked them and, uh, you know, what we're most looking forward to, I think. So let's begin with the opener. Uh, it was released on October 3rd, but we won't probably won't be able to watch it until that weekend because it seems like everything in the universe is coming that week, uh, in our real lives during yeah. that time. Uh, it's right on our anniversary, by the way. Uh, happy early anniversary. Let's watch some Stephen King. Ooh, that's uh, a this adaptation of Salem's Lot has been in the can for almost two years now and it makes me wonder is it really bad or is it just like they didn't want to cut it down to a PG-13 rate I don't know I have no idea and people have been telling me well Stephen King said it's really good like, he says everything's really good so I'm not really really concerned about that but uh, besides thinking that the trailer was too loud what do you think about the trailer are you excited um, so we watched the old one we've watched both the old ones we watched the Rob Lowe one, we watched the old TV one from the 70s, yeah, which was I think, very 70s. Yeah, no, and maybe I'm not remembering very well. I have not read the book, but just from the movies, it seems very different. Uh, I mean, there's stuff in there. Like some of those things, like, I just I don't ever expect Stephen King adaptations to be faithful, so I'm not going to hope for that. But it does look better than I expected. The casting looks bright. The guy playing Ben, I'm not sure about that at all, but I never try to judge that until I see him on the screen. I'm not familiar with the actor, but uh, Father Is that Callahan. Is the one trying really to affect some kind of accent, or was it an accent? I am not. I'm not really sure, but it was an interesting speech. Well, pattern. it was Salem's Lot. So then it was your pick, and your pick really surprised me because it wasn't even one of the trailers that we watched. But uh, I think we did. We just did not in that night where we make like an event yeah. out of it. And your yeah. pick was Dark Water. Dark Water. Now, this is the Jennifer Connelly one, correct? Where like and there's there's some kind of washing machine. I think we must have watched this. Yeah, I think we must have watched this. Uh, evil laundry. That's what she wants to watch, guys. Evil that's, laundry. That's uh, on my notes. It, yeah, it, it does say evil laundry. Yeah. Evil laundry. Um, okay. Because this is. It looks like maybe a halfway house for domestic violence victims. It's a mom and daughter, but something's going on with the water and it's dripping or it's not really there and it's down in the laundry room where the moms are all like. Oh, you see that too. It's not just us. Oh, okay. So everybody can see. It's kind of bucket list for me because this one comes up uh, quite frequently. So I am really glad that you picked it. Are you glad that I picked the one that I picked next? Well, no. And just without even having watched the trailer, clearly it stuck in my head. So I wanted to get that out of I was of surprised my that that was her number one pick, guys. Yeah. It really, really was. Uh, mine is No One Will Save You. This one, actually, I tried to throw it on the list last year because I saw the trailer. And the trailer, I like, gave her a panic up. attack. And I was like, yeah, that looks good. So I mean... A good old home invasion movie. I think this one might have aliens. I'm not really sure. But yeah. what I've heard about this one is there's like almost no dialogue. So it's just it's like completely stressful because it is just like a, you know one actor kind of like castaway. Horror castaway, I think is what I heard it called. So, uh, I, hey, cool. What was it about the trailer that freaked you out? Just I'm not. No, definitely the alien kind of the sound big effects. spider monster. My yeah. notes say it to me it's reminded me of The Conjuring plus um, Silence. Well, that was the movie with the home uh, invasion. Hush. 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 Mike hush. Flanagan. Hush. Great movie. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good, but it looked like a combination of Conjuring and Hush. So I've I didn't heard realize some good there was very so. minimal dialogue. Which, if you're just one chick in a house, there's yeah. I want to like say, wait, you get a certain age. I mean, I think this. I don't know if you think this. I think you get a certain age, and a movie can't really scare you anymore. She probably would disagree. But I think if it can make you uncomfortable, and that looks like the kind of movie that's going to make you just be like, I can see the train coming, and I just can't get off the track. That's what it feels like. So it's good enough for me. Sure. What you got? Uh, for my next pick, I. 
picked the Pope's Exorcist. Ah, Maximus, Maximus working for the for the Catholic. Now this is a you know with all exorcism stuff, it's always based on uh, accounts mm-hmm. of, of real life events. Mm-hmm. Uh, this to me looked like if you had told me this was made by the team that makes the Conjuring movies, I'd have believed you. Yeah, because it that looks same it cinematic looks, feel. It looks almost like uh, the Conjuring and the Nun. Obviously, the Nun being in yes, that universe, so uh, I get a lot of that. Hopefully, it's better than the Nun. Uh, agreed. Um, I liked. There was a couple things I liked about that. Clearly, the actor, um, mm. and then also this kind of almost Illuminati cult type Vatican City vibe that I was getting. Yeah, I like where he's like, I got to go talk to my boss. Yeah, the Pope. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. Uh, well, I don't really know much about it. I, 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 I saw the trailer last year and it looked pretty good. And I said, well, let's go ahead and get that on the list for uh, for next year's spooky season. Also, I thought it'd be a good counterpoint to what I think is going to scare the pants off of me. This one would be a little more low key cerebral. Yeah. Yeah, the next one I picked. Now, this is one that she said that she, last year she said, sure, I wouldn't mind doing that. And then she watched the trailer this year and she said, oh my God, what have I got myself into? This is Terrifier. Now, Terrifier, uh, obviously, look, uh, the spooky clown thing blew up again after it was a big success uh, to a lot of mainstream audiences, people like myself and her that read the book of it. We've been like, eh, it's cool with clowns for a while now. But with this, to me, the trailer, it almost looked like them old trauma movies where it just looks like it's super low budget and the gore is just cranked to 40, I think. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean... <laughs> If it's anything I, like the trailer, I don't know if you're going to make it without being yeah, like this. Yeah, I'm not so. a big, I'm not a gore porn girl. It it does kind of give Saw vibes. Mm. Um, yeah. Looks a little more yeah. visceral than real. Like Saw, I like you get it, yeah, it's good makeup. You know, it always looks eh. funny. This just looks gross. The, the, the earlier Saws are more gory. The later Saws are a little camp, almost like. Nightmare on Elm Street sequels. And this is one of those I've heard that, like, the first movie's, like, fine, but it's, like, the sequels that, like, take it to, like, an actual, like, storytelling level. It's pretty good. So if like I can, Annabelle. So if I can be, if I can get her through this one, maybe we can get the other ones on there. But, hey, you know, you have me at Scary Clown Slasher. I grew up watching slasher movies. I'm all about slasher movies. So, yeah, I'm a sadist, I, I guess. What do, you, what do you have next? Let's see. My phone went to sleep. I am... Oh. Oh. Following up with Creep 2, because I assume this is going to be really gross, so yeah. I'm just going to go with uh, cringe. So, no, I, Creep so, was very... Uh, it was like, I, maybe it's because I know that actor from The League, so I just mm. kept expecting a joke to get made when we were watching Creep. Well, but there was attempts at making jokes. You, just, yeah. you, you want to talk about like uncomfortable horror. Yes. I think that that's really yes. it. And it's just seeing that the way... It doesn't just look like they're trying to do the same thing again. It does look like they're trying to do something different with it. Yeah. And, and I can appreciate that. That's the only fan doesn't like your note pen, does I it? I noticed. Uh, but, uh, I mean, cool. I mean, Creep was one that we had on our list for these every single so year, and long. it never made it. Yeah. It never made it. Now the fact that we're doing the sequel the, next, the following year means uh, the guy in the wolf mask obviously left a little impression on you. Can I get a wolf mask like that for, like, no, Halloween? You. I don't like masks. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... That's creepy. That's Couldn't creepy. Couldn't see your lovely face. Lack of a better word. It's really, really creepy. What I pick, I can't see. Oh, uh, Long, Long legs. legs is the one that I pick. This is just because a lot of my patrons over on Mike's book reviews have been telling me about this one. You know, I complain about a lot of modern horror not being any good. This one really, to me, seems very Silence of the Lambs meets kind of Black Phone. I think it's kind of the mm-hmm. feeling that I got because it feels like it is kind of take. And I've said I think the best thing to do for horror movies is Take them pre-technology, super technology. Yeah. Pre-90s or better, you know, because you don't have to explain away cell phones and all that stuff. And it looks like it's doing that. But I got, I got a lot of Clarice Starling out of this. I got sure. Silence of the Lambs plus Hereditary on my notes. And it's, it's uh, I think Nicolas Cage is playing the killer? I That's, think that, yeah. He's zany enough, I think, that might be. They keep doing, like, this weird sound. Like, Bruh! Oh, the trailer's like, what is that? So Not cool. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, about this one. All this. I've just, said, I've just had pretty good word of mouth on it. So uh, the fact that it's going to be out in digital in time, I said, yeah, let's go ahead and throw that one on there. What'd you get? Um, so this is one, after we watched the trailers, I kind of, nothing really struck me. And then I woke up that night and I was going back to sleep and I was thinking of the orphanage. Mm. And I, I thought it was odd because it didn't look particularly creepy or good. But if that's the one that's still running around in my subconscious at 3 a.m., then it's got to get a high See, pick. I was kind of disappointed in the trailer because I was like, whoa, a Gilma de Toro movie I haven't seen? What in the mm-hmm. world? What's going on? I love it. He has great monsters. And then we watch the trailer, there's zero monsters in it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I always like the Toro for his, for his monsters, his creativity. The are great. You know, so it's, uh, I, 
I'm not saying that that's going to take away from it all, but I mean, all of his movies always come away with me. He has such a great imagination for monsters. Maybe and they the just stories are always like the they're fine. They're fine. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. But you know, last year I think the sleeper hit was Wreck and the Host, and I don't think either one of those trailers really like wowed me. True. You know, so maybe maybe, maybe this one will do it. I don't know. But hey, in the end, Sweet. Creepy Kid is always a winner, right? Oh, ah, uh, Creepy, creepy kid. kid. Creepy Kid Mask. <laughs> Except Trick or Treat. That one's the one that like both of us were kind of like, wow, people really love this, huh? People are probably flipping tables. Right. Right now. What do I got? Uh, yes, I'm that blind, guys. The Autopsy of Jane Doe. This one comes up every few years. And I think the reason it, it kind of got oh, interest yeah. this year is because my wife's watched Succession now. And this has Logan Roy and Brian Cox. And uh, so, so she was like, oh, oh, hey, yeah, I know him. But it looks kind of like, I forget that movie we watched with the the cop lady last year where oh, she was in the yeah. precinct and she was she going insane or not. Yeah. Makes me think of that when you're like scared, of, not claustrophobia, but like you're scared of like an enclosed area with no way out. I don't know, it's some some kind of term. I'm sure somebody bring it up, yeah. but uh, yeah, it looks very claustrophobic in that regard. It looks very freaky in that regard, and a kind of I don't know if it's a zombie story or what this person wasn't they dead the bell, or, or what. They had the bell around the cadaver, mm. and I liked it. it. Looked like it had a father son aspect to it, and yeah, there's def- there's definitely a, a zombie something going on. All right, what you have next? Uh, Sleeping with the Enemy. Let's see. Now, last year I threw on the old one of uh, God. What was it? Where Kiefer Sutherland like loses his wife? What was that one called? But Jeff Bridges was the killer. Van- vanishing. The Vanishing. Yeah, the I did vanishing. that one. So I was like, "Hey, cool. That's the good, oh, a nice yeah, yeah, '90s yeah. throwback movie yeah. we haven't watched before." And I think this was. We were having our timelines mixed up. I think this was before Julie Roberts was like humongous. This was pre Pretty Woman, I think. But this is one of those movies like I was too young to watch when it came out, but I know the ending. I saw the ending when I was a kid, and I didn't understand. My mom had to explain to me what was going on because <laughs> I was very disturbed by it. So I know the ending. I'm glad you don't. I this, don't know the This ending. movie was huge. This movie was huge in the 90s. And actually, I was just kind of flipping through, and I was like, oh, look at this Julia Roberts movie. Like, it was a clip or something on Reels, and I was like, wait a second. This is a scary movie with Julia Roberts? I had no idea that was even a thing. And I was like, you know what? I'll fill out my Julia Roberts repertoire. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, like, I don't know if like financially it was a super big. But I just remember, like, in pop culture, this movie was very, very popular, uh, especially among divorcees. I think mm. that was a really, really big thing. So yeah, that's it looks a little bit. Sign looks, of the time. It's like it's like you know how she was in that movie Runaway Bride. Mm-hmm. Now, now imagine if like the person she ran away from said, "I'm going to yes. kill you now." Yeah, yeah, that's what it, that's what I got from the trailer. That and, and double that. jeopardy. I got a lot of double jeopardy yes, out of it. Yeah. Where she, where she uh, well, he fakes his death or she, no. She fakes her death. Or he tries to kill he her, she, she lives. He fakes her, his death, so she can get convicted for murder. That's what it was. And man. then when she finds him alive, she And can this one, her. crazy, like, Freddie Mercury mustache man is like, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for There's you. There's also a great blown out man mullet. Dude, he's got some nice 90s mullet in there, yeah. man. It's really, really good. Uh, speaking of mullet, that's usually something you have when you're old. I should know. Uh, look, we had to pick from two M. Night Shyamalan movies this year <laughs> and we said we're not doing both you can't you can't do two M. Night movies in the same year you you have the opportunity of just blowing the whole month because I think you're a little easier on M. Night yeah. than I am I think the guy is incredible I love the twist amazing storyteller and he always blows it with that Brent Winksian kind of twist that's a that's a book reference love he twist. always feels a need to put some kind of twist in there just because Sixth Sense did it and I'm always like dude just tell your story man and I so I always think that his setup's great Delivery just doesn't always. Execution knows what to go through. But it was between this and Knock at the Cabin, and this trailer just, I've got to know what's going on with this beach. I just i just have to know, you know? So uh, it's one of those, I think the review I read said, uh, only M. Night can make a movie like this. And I don't know if that could be a great thing. That could be a very, very bad thing. It could be a very true thing. But uh, I think the thing with, with M. Night that keeps me coming back is I always just going to say, look, he had one of the greatest movies ever in, in, in Sixth Sense, and I think Unbreakable is just as good. Oh, my gosh, And yeah. so it's just like, I, I think the guy's got the fastball. It's like, but can't he still throw that fastball? So I keep hoping all the time. You know, I thought I thought the liked, split and split 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 was great. I also liked uh, visit. We did visit a couple years. Visit back. was okay for a family. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't that the felt best. like his get his mojo back kind of movie. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But so uh, this is our second missing kid because I think the orphanage is also about a missing kid. Is it? Uh, yeah. Well, creepy kid, missing kid. You know, these things, these things all go through. And then you had blink twice, which I had never heard of. Uh, honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, I'm a Channing Tatum hater. I think the guy <laughs> cannot act whatsoever. And he's, really good dancer. He must be a, just a great... Like, the only movie I've ever liked him in was 21 Jump Street. Because <laughs> I don't think he was acting. I think that's... Just, <laughs> I think we went and saw the old G.I. Joe movie back in the day. Way oh back gosh. when. G.I. Joe. Oh that's how God. long ago this pregnant. was. And she goes, 
what was the character Channing Tatum played again? I was like, Duke. And she goes, huh, explains his acting. And 100%. so I've never been able to forget that. So uh, <laughs> it's it's one of those things. But this trailer, it, it's got some real star power in it. Besides that, I was just like, it's got a lot of people in it that I recognize. I was like, I've never even heard of this. Almost kind of looks like Fantasy Island, but like a little bit of like The Lotus. Is that what it's called? White Lotus on HBO, which I haven't watched. But that's the vibe I get out of that trailer. Did you get any of that? I don't know. I got are they, are they, are they high? Perfect Strangers. And like, yeah, a little bit of microdosing or something's going on. Like, but it gave me nine perfect stranger vibes because they're all going to this island. There's clearly um, psychedelics being involved and lots of money. And see, but I'm like, is it that or is it like midsummer? You know, where they're mm. trying to get you into a cult or something? Mm. You know, that's that's what I have no idea. But it looked uncomfortable enough, c- creepy enough that I'm I'm in. I want to find out. I'm hoping they didn't give away too much in the trailer though, with like with the, the missing friend and all that. I'm like that that feels like that could have been a really good twist to have happen in the movie. But you know, I don't know. I, I've never even heard of this until you recommended it. So cool, cool. We'll see what happens. Channing Tatum aside, uh, how long until he takes his shirt off? Thirty minutes. There's a beach scene. Yeah, so. right, there you go. Uh, look, guys, we have you watched. Got it, flaunt it. We have watched every single one of them for the good and the bad, for richer, for poorer. I Are will always be there for. Well, we didn't do the one without Jigsaw in it. No, uh, saw, saw, socks, socks, saw, saw, oh, saw X. Yeah, saw X. Look, you got Tobin Bell back as Jigsaw, of course. I'm going to watch, and I've actually heard this was actually pretty good. And I think that I think we call this like a sidequel because I feel like it takes place because yeah. he spoiler Companion. guy. 12, 13 year old spoiler, he, Jigsaw dies in Saw 3, and it looks like this either takes place before it or during it or parallel to it. I'm not really exactly sure how, how it actually falls into the timeline. But again, you've got him back as Jigsaw. I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm always down for some little shenanigans, seeing what he can make people do to save their own lives. It's always great. I love the traps. I love the booby traps. Not much into the like torture porn like Hostel did, but mm-hmm. with Saw, I like the moral ambiguity of it of being like yeah well you know you can save yourself but how far are you willing to go and you know it makes you think do i want to do i want to live without that leg <laughs> you know things like that so uh, i'm always down for more shenanigans with with jigsaw he's got a great voice and you love little dolls on tricycles i think no. <laughs> and then the one that i got confused with uh because when she picked it i said i already did know one will save you <laughs> she picked one a book i really want to read no one gets out alive. Now, this is a book by Adam Neville, who wrote The Ritual. And I actually read Last Days by him, and I love The Ritual. Ritual was, our, 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 I think, our spooky season movie of the year, like two two spooky seasons ago. We loved it. So uh, a follow-up to that sounds really, really cool. But it, it, just another haunted house, haunted building kind of story? Yeah, I don't know. There seems to be some kind of super, and he has these ladies come in, and they're they're like, and he's like, don't leave. You'll make it worse. Yeah, I like that. I I've like, always liked is, that. Yeah, where you... Paranormal activity started yeah. doing that where it's the first time I'd actually heard of, like, you don't always see the haunted house or the haunted building. You're like, get out. And you know, saying, Easy well, peasy. No, it, you're not, it, the building is, you're the one that's being haunted. haunted. You're being, you're you're being followed. You, yeah. I love that idea. So I'm glad that something else is is playing with that. I'm not really but, sure that's what it is, but. That's what I got from the trailer. Yeah. 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 But I, again, I, I kind of read more of this guy's books because everyone just says that, that I would just love them. I was lukewarm on last days, but the movie, The Ritual, I, I thought was just. Brilliant. And then you guys aren't going to believe this. The last pick here for me. I have never seen Cronenberg's The Fly with Jeff Goldblum. I have never seen this. I feel like I have. at this point, it's so many parts of pop culture that have just kind of spoofed it or parodied it. I've heard of the Simpsons and South Park and family. They've all probably done it at least two or three times. It's just one of those things I feel like you know everything about it, but I've still never actually seen it, which is really, really weird. And it, it's almost as weird as you thinking Jeff Goldblum is sexy. That's that's about as, as how weird it gets. He has a charisma. It's got something, but I mean, it's just it's one I've wanted to see for a long time. So um, I'm excited about it for sure. It, it's at Cronenberg, so it's going to be very disgusting. It's going to be very, very, very oh, yeah. disgusting. Yeah, there's and, a lot of... It's well executed. I think when I was a kid, uh, my brother was, because my brother was six years older than me, so I saw some things I probably shouldn't have. And he was watching, I saw the part where he, Jeff Gold is already like mutated or whatever, and he like grabs a guy's arm and like vomits on it, like like the acid. Was, I, was just, I was like, I'm not watching this shit, <laughs> you know? But, you know, hey, uh, now I'm all about these things. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much uh, what we got. That's probably a little ambitious, but we're not trying to squeeze in a Mike Flanagan Netflix series this year, so I feel like we'll have more time. For other things, we do got some uh, some movies we're going to watch with our oldest son. Now, youngest kid, he's he's. It's hard to get him to Fairness. sit down and watch anything, so we'll probably just put on you know Charlie Brown, Great Pumpkin, and, and Beetlejuice and things like that again. Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, for the youngest one. 
Oh, you mean the the cartoon? The car- I thought you, yeah. I thought you meant Tim Burton. The Disney short. No, 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 no. The Disney short. <laughs> yeah, you, but anything Ichabod over thirty Crane, minutes, is that it's, what they call it's that a one? it's a it's a gamble with him. But my oldest has kind of gotten really really interested in it, and I think that really started. He was just curious why I like Stephen King so much, so he wants to watch more Stephen King movies. My wife's kind of mm. iffy on these, but uh, there are a couple he wants. Now, first, uh, obviously. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is going to be when we watch The yeah. Family. If yeah. it, I, I believe they said it comes out in the middle of October for digital. I think even digital. the youngest will be down for that. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've forced that on my kids numerous times, and uh, Beetlejuice is, is amazing, and I've heard it. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, uh, some people were complaining, oh, well, you know, Beetlejuice is only in it for like 16 minutes or something. I'm like, oh, you mean like the first movie? You know, it's not about the it's not about the amount of time it's there. It's what you do with that time that is given it's to you. It's about Gina Davis. And, uh, and uh, it, looks, it looks really, really fun. It's doing Huge numbers at the, at the box office. So awesome. I heard that they're already talking about maybe doing a part three. So I hope that Tim Burton got his fastball back because I feel like he's been mailing it in probably ever since Alice in Wonderland. I feel like he's just been on paycheck mode for a while now. And I liked Alice, the first one. The first one, yeah. second one I watched like 30 minutes. I was like, nah, I'm good. Mm. I'm good. And you being the Alice super fan, I don't know how that worked for you. I remember you went and saw part two and I was like, what do you think? And you're like, eh, that's all you said. It was a very typical <laughs> Alice part two. And was it, it through the looking glass? Or, no, they didn't really do. No, it was more like the Mad Hatter story, and they probably um, should have just called Mad it Hatter. Mad Hatter Mad story. Hatter. Okay. Well, the big one for my oldest this year, and I like. Here's the thing: is like he's headstrong. He doesn't. Besides Saul, I, I think that he's never really been super bothered by horror movies. So we feel like it's, it's with your kid. That didn't bother him nearly as much as it bothered you uh, or me. Well, he was the only one upset about having to sleep next to the attic. Well, I mean, Zelda don't play. It was in terrible. But it wasn't like Saul. Saul, he had a, he wouldn't sleep in his bed yeah, for a week. Yeah, I would say he was in our uh, bed, yeah. But he's, he's terrified of, of little dolls, you know, so that, that that's his thing. But he's been asking to watch Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. Oh, okay. And the thing with this is I was always like, look, I don't care if he sees violence. I don't care about bad language and, and things like that. He's, he's headstrong enough. I'm not worried about that. But I've always been about... I don't know about the SEX stuff because yeah. I don't want to make him uncomfortable. I don't want to make me uncomfortable. And she's saying, I don't really think he's ready for the descent. I'm like, but do you think he's ready for Nightmare on Elm Street where a girl sleeps with somebody and they get dragged across the ceiling and slashed to pieces? But I watched it when I was way younger than him, so I don't feel like I should be shielding him from this anymore. But the first Nightmare on Elm Street, which you say you're not even sure you've seen, I say I don't think I've seen the first is one. legitimately scary. Freddy wasn't a joker yet; he wasn't a cracking jokes the whole time and making you laugh. He was just a straight up killer. And All my Nightmare on Air- Elm Street experience and, and was joking, Freddy, right? Well, no, it was all TBS. Well, yeah. Oh, wow. Even TBS better. at my at my great grandparents by myself in cornfield so there were other layers of scary but the movies themselves weren't scary he did jason lives last year and he did halloween last year so i was like all that's left is freddy he's, he's got to do some freddy so i'm gonna let him do it and i'm just gonna tell him hey and we do this with him every year if it's too much just no one's gonna make fun of you just say it's too much and we'll stop you know so i think he'll be fine he probably sees way worse stuff on the tablet games that he shouldn't be playing okay. uh the other stephen king one he's picked in you're like, I don't know about it. I'm just like, I think he's going to get bored and stop watching is The I Shining. He wants to watch The Shining just because he knows the references. He knows mm-hmm. here's Johnny. He knows the little come and play with his yes. daddy. He knows the blood elevator. Yeah, he the knows these things. Flood, so I think yeah. he really just wants answers, really. I try to tell him, that is a slow burn movie and it is 99% dialogue. It's like there is not very much going on in that movie. It's just a very much a journey just watching a guy's descent into madness. Right. But he seems to be prepared for that. So, I mean, so I, it, I'd love for him to a- like it, but... It is partly I don't I don't think he'll enjoy it for what it is and then yeah I'm worried about that room. Are you worried that he might know what you did last summer? I know what you did last summer, guys. This one's a classic from from from, from our generation. This was like one of our slasher films in the '90s. But it's like after Scream got big, which is her favorite horror yeah. movie of all time, is Scream. Yeah. I felt like he got a whole new batch of those kind of movies. And I know what you did last summer was probably like the closest. To doing what Scream did was for oh, as far I'd as like agree. Uh, I'd agree. numbers and things like that. Uh, at the time, like Jennifer Love Hewitt was like my biggest crush in the world, along Shocker. with Buffy, along with Buffy, who was also in this movie. Uh, oh yeah, because you were real mad about Ryan Philippe and Freddie Prinze Jr. I'm sure. Actually, no. At the time, don't listen to her now. At the time, no. I bet at the time you weren't you weren't mad about it. Anyhow, anyhow, uh, I think this movie was a lot of fun, and I I, I think you'll enjoy it as well. It just. I love the way anything that plays with those old urban legends that we used to know, except the movie Urban Legend. Yeah, that was uh, kind of... 
the pop rock scene was pretty funny. But yeah. outside of that, I wasn't really crazy about it. But yeah, the man with the hook. I mean, this is a classic story. And uh, yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. And especially that ending. I think that ending is just going to freak him out. And he's just going to be like, is there a part two? Is what he's going to want to know. And I'm like, yes, but it's, but it's, it's, but you know, that'll be next year. But and if I part see two. if you still know what you did last summer, uh, Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock Psycho. This is one we just want to get I, him to watch before he just thinks he's above it. Or it's spoiled, or it, like if you get your classics in. I mean, anyone over the age of five probably knows. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, everybody knows that, right? I mean, it's. You want to talk about maybe the most parodied scene of all time? That oh, sure. might be it. Sure. Yeah, even if it's just the sound effects. But I just want to get him to watch some Hitchcock before he, you know, either thinks he's too good for it or I mean, he's already going to be like, this isn't black and white. Mm. He did no, that when actually, you're watching Twilight Zone. He did that. This is black and white, though. I think he'll be okay with that. I hope. I hope. We did. We did the black and white version of The Mist. That was pretty cool. You know, and he, he made it through The Mist. I think he can make it through anything because that's a messed up movie. But Psycho. I mean, I haven't seen the original Psycho in ages. You know, so this will this will be a lot of fun because few years back, uh, we were going to be doing nothing but Alfred Hitchcock for uh, mm-hmm. for Spooky Season, and I completely dropped the ball. It was like the second movie we did. We both fell asleep, and I just, we just never went back to it. it sucks, because, I mean, the guy's a master. Master. You know, but it just, it's a shame. The Birds is probably still my favorite, but Psycho, it was right there. I have seen her. Vertigo is really good, too, man. Hitchcock's got some good movies. We should do a whole retrospective on Hitchcock. Huh? True gonna... story. <laughs> now, this one's mine because I love it, and I show it to everybody who's never seen it. This is Tales from the Crypt's Demon Knight. I think that this is just a blockbuster performance for Billy Zane. I think Billy Zane is, he just, he was too soon. He had so many roles that he just completely hit a home run in. And it was just like, it was too soon. It just wasn't the right time for Billy Zane. I think this guy could have been a huge actor. And I think the closest he ever came was Titanic. Could have been a contender? Could have. Because this guy, I mean, you think that this guy's first movie was Critters. You know, Critters. And so he always kind of had the, the the cult horror status in it. So when they got into this movie, this dude had charisma like I had never seen before when I went and saw Demon. I did not expect that. It's got William Sadler. He's a he's a uh, Stephen King, uh, kind of a standby. He's in all these Stephen King adaptations. Jada Pinkett, before anybody really knew who she mm-hmm. was. Mm-hmm. It's a really, really good. It's got, uh, what, Claudette Wims from uh, from The Shield. Oh, yeah, She's yeah. in this. It's people you know, it's got your dude uh, uh, from Wings. Lowell? Joel? Lowell? Lowell. Lowell. It's got him. Yeah. It's, it's a really, really, really good movie. And, of course, you got the Crypt Keeper making his jokes. It's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, we grew That's up fun. watching Tales from the Crypt, yes. you know. So I think that will be a good first experience for him to see uh, just kind of that campy campy horror. It's, it's, it's really so good So it's stuff. perfect level of horror for a sissy like me. And the last one, just because I think it is the modern generation's like, if there is anything that's come close to replicating what the MCU has, where it's like you just want to have that shared, successful Shared universe. It's maybe the monster verse. That's the Godzilla King Kong franchise, but even that's like loose. It's 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 hit or miss with it. Uh, Got to show them the Conjuring because I think that the Conjuring of all the modern horror franchises, it's the only one that's going to stand the test of time. You know, I feel like most sequels or connected movies that come out when it comes to horror franchises are usually pretty rotten. And it's always like, well, let's go back to the first one. If you've got these two playing Ed Lorraine Warren, I will watch anything with it's these two. Sweetest love story. But those two actors are just, they've got so much charisma. I believe those two are in love. They are so, so good. I will watch anything. I think it was, weren't they in like three minutes of an Annabelle movie? And I was like, oh, great, they're in this. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, that first I, Annabelle. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, The Conjuring Universe as a whole, I think it's one of those that you watch some of those sequels and it makes some of those movies better. But The Conjuring, I agree. The Conjuring I agree. is just awesome. It is, yeah. it's, it's really good. Bathsheba, I conjure thee. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So that's that's if he gets that far. You know, we've got what two uh, is better than one. Well, it's got the nun. He he's already refused to watch Conjuring two. He's he saw the scene with the nun. He was like. Mm-hmm. Fuck Out. no. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't exactly crazy about it, but you know, I mean, who who really is? But I think he saw someone for Halloween dressed in done. He like turned around and started walking down the other way. Is this, street, is, is so. this the scariest 10 seconds in cinema? What, The Conjuring? Yeah. Or is that or the Conjuring other one? Two. Oh, no, that was Insidious. Insidious. Insidious, the scariest first 60 seconds of yeah. any movie ever. Uh, that, that's a story if you guys watched last year's video we, we, what we talked about there but that's 22 movies I, I doubt we'll get all these in yeah. it just kind of just depends on how everything goes but you know that's why we we do the ranking and we, we put them in that order that way if we get like the first 10 in I feel like we're usually pretty satisfied everything after that's kind of a bonus but I think it was last year or the year eight. before I'm good for eight. last year or the year before I think we were just like who cares if it's November let's just keep going let's keep going yeah. with it you know yeah. so 
Uh, well, we gotta, I think there was quite a few we really wanted to see, and we had so many highs because Wreck was great, Smile was great. Oh, Smile, Smile Two comes yeah. out like in theaters in October, so yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to wait till next want, spooky season to see and that. And Wreck Two, that was one that didn't make the cut. It's on would, my list. Would you? It didn't would make you? The cut. Would you wreck? Wreck? You give it a wreck? I would. Yes. A double C wreck. Yeah. For, <laughs> for a single C wreck. Hey guys, that's our list for this year. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will watch some of these with us or, or let us know. Make some recommendations because we Give always have to keep. We keep a lot of, all the recommendations I got last year. We threw on our list to vote mm-hmm. for this year. So always we'll take those recommendations. So uh, tell us what you guys think about these. And hopefully no spoilers, you know, except I, all those I've seen all those that I've got for the kid. But uh, it, it should be a lot of fun. Are you excited for any of these? Drop in the comments and let us know, and we will talk to you there.